Good morning, Emmanuels. I am Gary Miller, and I'll soon be followed by Keith Vineyard. We are me members of the Church Council and liaisons to the stewardship team. Today, the outreach and service team will present to you goals, programs, and tasks that each of these areas have formulated to continue and enhance the ministries of our congregation, as well as its participation in the community. Next Sunday, the worship and education teams will talk to you, and in two weeks, the congregational care team and the stewardship team will have their talk. And now here's Keith. Gary and I are here this morning to uh, ask each of you to listen to these presentations in the coming weeks. Give careful consideration to what you hear, the projects, tasks, and ideas that each of these committees present to you. And please consider choosing one of them, at least one, to become involved in. These things are important in the life of the church, and it'll also be an enriching experience for you, I'm sure. If you feel so moved, we do have space for uh, leadership in these teams as the, the council members are liaison to the teams and not necessarily the people who chair them. So your, your presence at meetings would be important. We do have meetings once a month, and uh, if you can choose a, an item and make a meeting, that would be just wonderful. I think you'll enjoy it, and it's only about an hour or so for each once a month meeting. This month, the meeting that we're going to hold will be on Monday, February 28th, after all of the teams have had a chance to make presentations to you and tell you the, the different things that, that they're doing. Gary and I will be back on February 27th, the last Sunday in the month, to ask again for you to have listened to these presentations and considered really faithfully to, to see if there's something that, that interests you that you would like to be involved in. So we really need your involvement, and we're asking that today for you to listen and, and pick something. Um, today, the council is introducing the uh, outreach and service committee, or a team, liaison team, and that's Sarah Kennedy and Alan Bodie, and they'll give you a presentation on their, their tasks and, and projects. Thank you. Thank you, Gary and Keith. As uh, Keith had mentioned, Sarah and I are on the outreach and service. Basically, our area of fo focus is a little bit different than the rest in that we are outside of the church just a little bit. We basically are a community and inside also the church. Uh, one of the things that we look at is God works our hands. Uh, we do highway cleanup. We are volunteering for Habitat for Humanity. We work with Christian Cupboard. And basically, we also are planning Easter egg hunt with our day school across the street and also here at Easter Sunday. Uh, Sarah, you have anything to add? Sure. We have lots of things that we've talked about, but if anybody has any ideas of ways that you would love to help contribute to push us outside of the church, helping our community, definitely come on the 28th and join us and have some conversations. Thank you, Sarah. At this time, I'd like to change my hat to my council president. Unfortunately, this past week, we had a member of the council that resigned from the council. That leaves us with an opening. Per the Constitution 12.03, we need to fill that vacancy. And in doing so, I'm asking for a person that would maybe volunteer to fill the rest of the year. Uh, they would make council meetings, be a member of the ministry team. So if you think that you would be interested in filling about 10 months, see Pastor Marcus or give myself a shout and we'll talk about it. Thank you very much for your time and patience.
Good morning again, Emmanuels. I invite you to rise as you are able in body or in spirit for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our, your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us. Reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our gathering hymn, Hymn 717. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue with our canticle of praise.
let us pray together. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the power of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a sh shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. There's, excuse me. Their hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is a devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? The Lord tests the mind and search the heart to give all according to their ways according to the fruit of their doings, the word of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. They are like trees planted by streams of water. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? 
If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise as you are able in body or in spirit for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I have spent quite a bit of time in my ministry reflecting on the patterns and traditions that define our funeral ministry. Walking with so many families has led me to peel back the theological layers that we are taught in seminary as to how we celebrate the lives of people baptismally entrusted to our care and reveal the why we do it. It is great to know and embrace the how, the ins and outs of good liturgy, because these rhythms offer the tradition and familiarity that can bring comfort amid tragedy. But the how only gets us so far. It gets us to the point of moving and swaying in our pews, not too much though, because we're Lutheran, as a corporate voice of worship but it does very little to take us into the real world. It's the why that draws us beyond the comfort of this sanctuary and the rhythms of this worship service and pulls us into the ministry Jesus has commissioned us to lead. To see the why at work and to build a framework from which we step out beyond our worship services, funerals or otherwise, we turn to the prophet Jeremiah. Our Jeremiah text is a poem set within a much larger collection of wisdom sayings that center on a dichotomy, a life lived in God 
and a life lived outside of God. A life lived in God brings blessings. A life lived outside God brings curses. A life lived in God is rooted in the power and vitality of God. A life outside of God ends only in death. The prophet does not mince his words when it comes to where our trust ought to lie, when holding the things of this world and our relationship with God in our hands. When we, humanity, are left to our own devices, we can and often do fall very quickly into the patterns and rhythms of self-preservation. We have been imbued with the mindset of grabbing those bootstraps and yanking ourselves up because when we look out for priority number one, me, all seems well in the world. We have been told this is the model of success, the achievement of the biggest of dreams, the way to prove one's worth and value in the world. But the prophet, and later Christ, does not see this mindset and model as anything helpful. For Jeremiah, when trust is placed in what we can do for ourselves over and above what God is capable of, we are like the shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. Our lack of trust beyond ourselves leaves us blind to the possibilities of God. It's only when we relinquish the sole custody of trust in ourselves in favor of the benevolence of God that we find our roots being nourished by the streams. This relinquishing requires vulnerability. It requires mutual trust. And most of all, it requires faith. It's why we place green plants and flowers at funerals. If you've been to any of the funerals this past week, they were absolutely stunning. This whole chancel filled with the fragrance and the beauty of plants. Amid the loss and grief, when all hope seems to be dashed and the beauty and hope of life is wrenched from this world, the plants and the flowers and the greenery we place around our coffins and urns symbolize new life. Those little plants, in all their spray and potted and vase glory, remind us of the simple truth of Jeremiah's words. Trust in God means life. When life seemingly removes the moisture of our hearts, and we feel as if we are dry and unable to move. Returning our trust in God forces the roots of our baptismal lives deeper into the waters of the streams of life. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Thank you for putting the enunciation on the is, Carolyn, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by the water, sending out its roots into the stream. It's in those waters, the waters poured or splashed or washed or dunked or via a water balloon, however you were baptized. Was anyone baptized by a water balloon? That would be pretty amazing. Super soaker? I don't know. <laughs> we are reminded that nothing in this world through those waters, nothing in this world can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Jesus' words in the gospel ought to come to our ears with a little familiarity as this is Luke's version of the famous Beatitudes. Yet here in Luke's gospel, Jesus is not up on the mountaintop. He's down on the plain. Jesus is face to face, both narratively and physically. He's accessible to the crowds and the disciples who have come to follow him. There is great power in this unfolding scene because it leans right back into the words of Jeremiah. 
The trust afforded to God because of God's actions and activity in and among humanity is not because God remained on the mountaintop, but instead because God chose to become incarnate and walk, live, and die among and alongside humanity in Jesus Christ, as Paul reminds us in the Corinthians text. Out of love, God chose to meet humanity at the riverbank, in the dirt and the grime, in the mud of life, and reminds us of who has named and claimed us as those and through life is given eternal life. That is our why. That is why we do what we do. Because of what God has done in and through Christ, we are sent from this place to proclaim the gospel message of grace, hope, and love. We are called to exemplify the life and legacy of Jesus given in our baptisms and to care for one another and the world God made to work for justice and peace. Trust in God. Sink your roots deep into the baptismal waters of life. Be rejuvenated, be restored, and look around you because around you are signs of new life springing forth from all of those who have been planted with you along the stream of Christ. Their roots too, deepening and strengthening as the nutrients of new water, of fresh water, of the water of life, is giving them the energy and the gift to bear good fruit. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able in body or in spirit as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 479. Let us confess the faith of the church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all of God that has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those whose, who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, you spread continued blessing into the world. God of grace. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless the fruit with an abundance with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has endured and eroded after deforesting, deforestation. Rest re resurrect woodlands after the forest fires. God of grace. Search the heart of those who govern that they lead with humanity, inspire leaders to cooperate on policy that protects people and the planet, sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace. Send your blessing of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those who struggle with poverty, unemployment, and uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who are, face persecution and grant peace to all who suffer. We especially pray in our hearts for those who need our prayers. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renew the congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future, you are preparing. Inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministries, partnerships, and God of grace, hear our prayer. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who live and lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with those around you. Peace be with you. Have to hold my pick. All right.
bring one of them up forward. Weren't those some of the best ushers you've seen in a long time? Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. These are the newly healed and revived after last weekend. Pack Troop Pack 107, our Cub Scout Pack. Let us pray. <coughs> Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with the heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to, hungry, to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of the star, he has shone forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him to be beloved son. And in the miracle of the water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth 
and the host of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look for, with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy, Holy Spirit, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the, whole, of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Come to the banquet for now all is ready. Of Christ. 
body of Christ and give them to you. Body of Christ, give them to you. Now in the body of Christ, give them to you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for you have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with us riches, with richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcement highlights that I want to draw your attention to on behalf of Madam President of the Ladies' Aid, Miss Jeannie Hall. <laughs> the Ladies' Aid will kick off their, uh, continue back on their meeting starting March 2nd. Uh, and going forward, hopefully with no other weather delays. That is, the, that is the hope. So March 2nd, Ladies' Aid will begin again. That is also a very uh, beautiful day and very important day in the church. That is also Ash Wednesday. So if you look at the very end of your bulletin, you will see uh, our beginnings to list of all of the services that are coming as we begin the season of Lent. There will be a noonday service in here, as well as ashes to go outside if uh, you can't make the noonday service. We will also then have a 7 o'clock service on Ash Wednesday. So please join us for one or all of those, depending on how your time allows. We'd love to have you for that. You can also then begin to see our Linton midweek services are there as well. A service at 12.05 will be a bring your own lunch. As, and then a service at 7 will then be a soup uh, and sandwich uh, dinner provided down in the women's ministry. So please join us for those as well. If you look on the second to last page of your bulletin, there is a note down at the bottom about CPR and AED training and certification. If you would like to be certified in either of those or both of those, uh, please let myself know or Donna Simmons know. We didn't get our sign up printed to go in the narthex. We're testing the waters to see how many people would be interested in doing that. We have been gifted, uh, a, a wonderful memorial gift has been given for the purchase of new AEDs for our church campus and day school. So there is training that is required with those. So if you would like to receive your CPR and AED training, uh, please let myself or Donna know, and we will let you know when those dates get firmed, uh, confirmed in, um, in March. So please be aware of that. There are a lot of other things that are there as well, but I want to recognize uh, Colin, who is sitting over here. Will you stand up? Uh, I'm sorry, Cameron. I don't know what I got, Colin. Cameron provided our beautiful prelude this morning. Give him a round of applause. What a gift to the church you are. Thank you. Man. There's a wonderful little bio of him on page eight if you need to want to know a little bit more, so please uh, grab that as well. And tomorrow, tomorrow is, is uh, Valentine's Day. Yes, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Okay. So do we have a new uh, rice from the flower that was made for Valentine's Day? And so we would like you to know who is the oldest person in the congregation because they're going to get the flower. If you're willing to share your age... Over 60. I'm going to do 65. 70. 75. 80. 85. <laughs> Let me back it up. 85, then 86. Who are the 85? I saw someone have their hand up at 85. Oh, yeah. Body in the back. There we go. All right. Oh, uh, Huleen. There we go. 85, 86. Going once, going twice, sold to the back to there. Woo, there we go, way in the back. Very nice, very nice. Grab your arrangement, it is yours to take. Make it beautiful in your home. <laughs> very nice. I invite you to rise as you are able then for our blessing.
with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news.